Hello again and welcome here. Today I am very excited to talk to some exceptional students in the IT uh, major and computer science. Uh, they have a good and nice experience in this field. They uh, worked a lot uh, in class and even outside the class. So join us to welcome them first and we will learn and uh, will listen to them to talk about their stories, their success, and we'll learn about how they get to that level and what uh, advice that they can give to you. First, I would like to start asking you guys to introduce yourself and your, your uh, name and your major, okay? So starting from you, Noah. Hello there, my name is Noah Rogers and um, I'm currently a physics major here at ICC. Hello, my name is Eli Mathis and I'm a computer information systems major. Hello, my name is Daniel Johnson and I'm a computer science major here at ICC. Hello, my name is Matt Farley. I am also a computer science major here at Illinois Central College. Hello, my name is Liam Android, and I'm a computer science major at IC. Okay, guys, so uh, my first question for you, what motivated you to be in this uh, department or in this major, IT or computer science or the physics? Uh, well, my major is physics. I just really find everything about the world fascinating and the reason I actually wanted to be in the computer science club is that's just another cool science that I'm really fond of. So it is a great opportunity to learn about. Uh, I have always been very intrigued with how things work mechanically um, and getting into the software side of it and programming uh, was kind of the next level into understanding how different things work. I, I've always been in, uh, interested in computers and uh, I like creating things kind of out of nothing. I know uh, you're not necessarily creating things out of nothing when it comes to programming, but I do enjoy when I create something, something very unique and that's pretty much why I like the computer science field and creating things. So I was always pretty good with computers um, and I really wanted to challenge myself uh, so I decided to pursue a major in computer science and it's been a lot of fun. I didn't have any programming experience prior to that and uh, let's all be honest, everybody likes money and there's money in computer science. <laughs> Well, when I was younger, what I wanted to do when I grew up was make games. And I knew that like programming was a part of that, so I started figuring out how to do that on my own. But I learned that I actually like programming in its own right. There's something about the problem solving that's really enticing. So that's, so I, that's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Um, I had always really liked computers. And I had to pick something at the time, so I figured, why not computer science? And luckily, I ended up really liking the problem-solving aspect of it and just building things in general. Okay, awesome. Uh, you know that computer science and any related IT field is uh, required and needed nowadays. And now it's the age of uh, information and the era of computers and artificial intelligence. So, uh, moving on, uh, which programming language did you learn here? And do you feel that you got the good foundation in the college? Uh, so, I learned Java here, and I really feel that at this college I developed a very keen sense for programming, at least uh, through our lectures and just reading the book as well. Um, and Compile helps solidify that a lot. So, I have learned Java, and I am not uh, yet done with school, so I'm sure to learn a lot more um, about Java and how to use it effectively. Uh, at uh, Illinois Central College, I actually learned Java as well as C++, and uh, I actually feel it gave me a good fundamental knowledge to be able to go out and learn on my own, and uh, the Compile Computer Science Club has also helped a lot with uh, my own research and researching more into 
different technologies and more programming languages. So at ICC, I learned Java and C++ as well. Um, I was kind of restricted in my my courses, so uh, they, I wasn't able to take all the programming classes I wanted. Uh, they do offer Python, um, some web development classes. Uh, there's a big array of other programming classes that I would have loved to take here, which I hear are great uh, opportunities. Unfortunately, I couldn't, uh, even though I will be taking some online courses over the summer involving some programming classes. So I learned Java at ICC, and while I'd had some experience with Java before I got here, taking the Java class here introduced me to some new concepts I'd been missing from self-teaching, which have really helped in my program organization. I learned Java and Python here, and I feel like learning what I learned here gave me a really good base to build on in self-study. Uh, okay, so uh, you learned some uh, programming languages here. What's your plan? What's your next programming language you would like to learn by your own, by yourself, and to maintain the self-learning skill, right? We need to, to be self-learners. So because every minute maybe there is a new technology, there is a new thing that we need to know about. So there is no school that will take you along from zero until uh, forever, right? So you need to just get the foundations here and then to start learning. And one of the good skills that you need to know and to, to practice is self-learning. And there are a lot of uh, resources, okay? So yeah, again, what is your next programming language that you would like to use and why you want to learn this language? Um, well, so I'm actually going to take C++ over the summer and learn about that. Um, but on the side, I've been working on like web development languages like HTML and um, CSS. Uh, I also would like to learn PHP and other languages as well in the future. Uh, my next step uh, will be to learn C++. Um, and then probably into uh, multiple other languages as well. So I'm actually uh, looking into uh, Python as my next language I want to learn. Uh, I'm also diving into more of the GUI interface, the graphic user interface of Java. And I want to work more with Java FX. And I also am looking more into uh, AI APIs. So I kind of want to start working with those as well. So. So over the summer, I'm going to take a uh, HTML, CSS, CSS uh, intro class. Um, I'm also going to learn some Python through CS50X um, and some a couple other languages. Um, I guess the big one I really do want to learn is Python. I couldn't take it here because of my scheduling, but I think Python is a really important language to learn now. So one that I really want to learn is C++. It's a much lower level language than I'm used to dealing with, which could help with most other ones I want to learn. Um, also a web framework, like maybe jQuery or React. And I've also thought about doing 6502 assembly so I could do NES homebrew because that sounds fun. Uh, normally I learn languages just based on what my needs are. So right now that's probably JavaScript and C. But in the future I'd like to learn a functional programming language pro like Scala because I feel like it would be a really good perspective to have other than object-oriented programming. There are a lot of programming languages and each programming language is uh, specialized in, uh, in a specific domain. But uh, Java that you learned about is a big and a good programming language to start with and even it is very required now in the industry and you can uh, go from small projects to even big and large projects in big companies and there are a lot and millions of devices around the world are that are using um, Java language so it's a great language and uh, there are a lot of APIs that you can start using right away to not start from scratch, you know, that will help you just to build on what you already have. So uh, my uh, next question is, uh, how did you become a better 
programmer. What did you do to be a better programmer? I would say that uh, I became a better programmer through really uh, side projects. It was uh, not just doing the projects at school, but as well as taking up my own projects that I wanted to do and working with things that I may not be working with in school and kind of experiencing APIs that I wouldn't be using normally. So over, over the course of time, I worked on a lot of projects, uh, a lot of different uh, graphic user interface things. So that's pretty much how I learned side projects. Yeah, I'm going to kind of steal Daniel's thunder here. I, I really think independent projects um, or side projects are a great opportunity to learn. Um, the, the unique thing about going and getting a professional education and programming is you're always basically going to be told what to do and what's expected of you. You're going to be given an assignment and it's really helpful for the foundation, conceptual understanding, but you won't really know the extent of how powerful that is until you start to independently create your own projects. Um, so I did find that taking the classes and the assignments were very incredibly helpful in learning, but I really kind of flourished when I went and worked on my own because I found out what I could really do with what I've learned and how to apply it to situations. And when you get into the real life, um, you're, you could be in situations where you're told what to accomplish, but I think you're going to be much more viable as an employee as, and as a project member just being able to independently think and create on your own. Uh, well, what I would say is pretty pretty similar to what they said is I just made projects on my own. So, like, what I would do is I would think about what kind of program I wanted to make and figure out how I wanted to make it, which is how early on I learned about different sort, which I learned about different things like arrays and different data types because they were necessary for the project. So the classes here have given me things that that. That, uh, that sort of learning missed out on because in that way I'll only really learn what I need. So in this way I'm getting a much I'm getting a much bigger overall picture of what programming really is. Um, like they said, personal projects really help, but I think for me the thing that's helped me most is finding a community of people that know already know what they're doing and I can just come to them, ask them questions whenever I need and just listening in on their conversations, I pick up stuff. Um, that and programming problems like leak code really help. Um, it just helps build the problem solving aspect of. Yeah, that's excellent. Um, and it's not about just doing your homework in the class. This will not uh, make you a professional and uh, excellent in programming. You need to practice, you need to do the project that you talked about. And I think this what helped us or what uh, motivated us, all, all of you, including me, to uh, start a computer science club, right? So uh, what my question is, what motivated you to be a member of this computer science club? And what uh, task that you uh, did? Well, uh, the big thing that motivated me is the more programmers, the bigger the projects, right? So you could always do projects on your own all the time, right? But you usually can't do massive projects on your own. You need more coders, you need more people to think about things, right? So uh, what motivated me to join the Computer Science Club was mostly that we could work on larger scale projects and we could have a shared mo a shared thought process on how we would go about tackling these projects. There's really so many benefits and motivations to joining a community such as such as our compile group. Um, but I, I, to name a few, I mean, you you kind of get to know a lot of people that uh, have similar interests than, than you or similar interests to you. And as you probably saw going through all the programming langu languages that we know, um, just as the, gr the group of us here, there's a vast variety of knowledge within just this college. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm kind of restricted in what I learned, but joining a group of individuals that are also programmers with other programming languages, it kind of helped me get introduced to other languages that I want to learn, uh, such as Python and other class, other uh, languages. The other good thing is it, it's a really 
kind of cool community to be a part of because it uh, promotes fellowship between your peers because computer science students or computer programmers aren't really known for being social so any opportunity we can get to kind of work together and socialize is a good opportunity. Well, up until I joined the club, I had never had a community of other programmers who I could be a part of and like bounce ideas off of. But programming has always been a solitary exercise, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to work on a team and get to know other people who might have experience in things that I've never even thought of before, which it turned out that I was exactly right in thinking that. Um, other than the obvious resume bump that having a club be, having participated in a club gives you. Um, I think, again, having a community is really important. Uh, everyone has gaps in their knowledge in whatever, but having other people around you that are in the field helps you fill in those gaps, I guess. That's great. So, some new students are struggling with programming. And for sure, or maybe you faced uh, this uh, difficulty while you are working in your class or your classes or even with the project that you are doing outside the class. So what's your advice for those students that they are struggling with programming and how you can overcome or how you did overcome this uh, difficulty? Uh, well, my advice would be that if you're if you're struggling find somebody that's not struggling you know there's there's plenty of people in your class that you could always talk to that will understand what's going on right and they'll be willing to help just all you have to do is ask and you know as will said there is the community like compile that you could always find people that know things that you may not know even if you were had learned them and just forgot about them they can help fill in your knowledge gaps so joining a computer science community is always another great option. Um, so three things come to mind. Look for your semicolons and look for your braces because that's 99% of the time that's what you're programming wrong. Uh, number two, use Google. Just, just Google it. Um, number three, just walk away. Uh, so many times I've spent working on a program and stupid red squiggly wouldn't go away and I couldn't figure out how to make it work and it was basically slamming my head against the keyboard I had to, I had to walk away and when I came back a few hours maybe the next day I immediately got it so and sometimes you just need to walk away for a little bit and then it'll come then it'll come to you okay well probably the best learning tool any programmer has is Google and Stack Overflow like pretty much all your answers are there it's like it's kind of like what Daniel said with uh, talking to people who are more experienced with you. Uh, it's like having that just in a database. But also, if you talk to someone who is more experienced than you, you can get a more personalized approach to the specific problem you're having. Uh, I think the first thing is run your code. Um, I was an SLI leader, and I saw a lot of students that just wouldn't run their code when they had an error, and they just wouldn't be able to figure it out. Um, other than running your code, Googling really helps. Don't be afraid to Google. Um. Yeah, as Matt said, uh, when you struggle or you cannot figure out how to fix a problem that you face, just give, you, give yourself a break a little bit. Go away a little bit and come back later on. This is one of the things. And as you mentioned, guys, uh, Google is good to search and not ju just to search for the answer. This is not the good way, the right way to, to learn. Finding the answer, you are hurting yourself if you find the answer and that's it. You want to learn, you want to be good at in the future at your job, at your work, right? This is your goal, not to just pass the the test. This is the, the thing that you need. And uh, moreover, you can do the debugging. Uh, this is a great tool to debug your code. And there is a video that I have on this channel that you can uh, watch to teach you how to use the debugger as well. So, um, yeah, great, great uh, things that I am hearing from my best students. And um, you worked on some projects in the computer science club. Uh, so can you 
uh, talk in brief about the task that you have assigned and uh, what you did and how this helped you to improve your skills, your programming skills. Okay, so uh, we worked we worked on a game engine this semester, and uh, my assigned job was actually project lead. So my assigned job was to uh, not only fill the gaps if there were any gaps, but to also organize any code that people submitted to me and enable all of that code to work together so that in the end our game engine worked. So uh, I learned a lot about managing a team of people. I uh, definitely learned a lot about that. That's always a good skill to have going into the coding world because not, not a lot of people have it in the coding world. Because like, uh, like Mad said earlier, it's not necessarily a social bunch in the computer science world. <laughs> but uh, other than that, I had also learned a lot of good things about coding along the way because our project had, uh, had shifted along the way. We had originally wanted it to be an online RPG, not even a game engine at all. So I actually learned early on how to do a server and a client system and how to make a server that connected multiple clients, not only just one. Um, I also learned, uh, that's also how I learned GUI. Um, ironically enough, uh, Dr. Rafik over here had uh, come over to me and just asked me to put a GUI on it real fast and I had no idea how to do a GUI. Uh, so then I'm like, okay, looks like I'm gonna learn how to do GUI. And uh, overnight, I uh, figured out how to do GUI, and uh, then I just went along the way doing my own projects and working some more, working with some more graphic user interface on JavaFX. It's a pretty good experience. So I think what I took from the experience overall, um, I learned a lot about working as a with a team. Um, in the real world, as a programmer, we like to think that we're all going to independently work. We're all going to be on our own individual projects. But in the real world, you're going to be put with a team with a certain goal in mind. And it's really important to kind of have that expectation going into that. Without this ideal ideology that you're going to be by yourself doing your own thing. You're going to solo code an entire AAA video game. That's not going to happen. You're going to be put on a group of people. And be putting put with a group of people. And being able to come to terms with that and expect that and use that to your advantage and know how to work with a group of people uh, with other programmers and what is expected of you, what is expected of others and being able to kind of meet those expectations and know what is expected of your group members. I think that's a really important tool and something I learned uh, with this project. So uh, like Matt said, a big thing that I learned was how to work with a team because this was the first time I'd ever had to do that. Previously, it had all just been independent study. So uh, work, like working with a project lead, I had to learn how to take a, cert, like, take a goal I was given for a certain segment of the game and translate that into code that will actually run. In, a, in the scope of a larger project as opposed to just this independent little thing where I know where everything goes. So that was good, so I felt like that was good experience. Um, I would say I worked most on the architecture of the project overall and testing. Um, I think I learned how to design a manageable code mostly from the project. Yeah, great. Uh, as you mentioned, guys, it's not just learning programming. There are a lot, a lot of other skills that you need to, to learn and to practice. Because, as you said, in real life, you are not working by yourself. There is a group, and you, you have to be a good uh, player in that group. You, you have to know how to handle the tasks how to integrate the tasks with other tasks that are assigned to other uh, members. So uh, one of the things that nowadays the companies are asking, if you are applying to a development or developer position, they will not ask you about the programming skills uh, um, only. The, the, they will ask you about other skills. They, they want you to, uh, to express how you will work with others, how you will help others. Uh, are you uh, willing to, ha to help and work with others? Because uh, you cannot do one project bef by yourself. The project will be large and you have uh, 
not all the, the knowledge to do everything. Like uh, uh, Daniel said, uh, the graphical user interfaces. Maybe you are uh, excellent in doing excellent project uh, algorithms, uh, calculations, but um, we are not good in uh, graphics, graphic design. So we need to work with other people for uh, building that to help us and how to communicate with them. So these are other skills that we need to know. And by the way, there is uh, or there are a set of videos on the channel for graphical user interfaces, how to start doing that. And there are a lot of other things that I'm starting to do. Other question is, what do you think we need to do to make the computer science club a better experience to the students? I would say uh, trying to get a little bit more participation would uh, probably be a good start. We, we do have a lot of members on paper, but we may not have as many active as we want. Um, but, you know, we are a newer club at uh, Illinois Central College, so it makes sense that we're, we're running into a lot of those troubles. But overall, I feel like that we have been getting better each semester, and we have been advancing as a club. So I think if we keep moving forward with these advancements, even at this pace, the club can turn out to be a very great, beneficial club at ICC. So I think... Um, like Daniel said, more participation um, would be really key, I think, to kind of help the group flourish. Um, also, maybe a campus presence. We, like, we are not even a year old at this point, so we're, so we're still kind of getting our footing, but like, uh, we're not really known, I guess. I'm sure there's a lot more people who would be interested in joining if we did have more of a campus presence. And maybe, I think, part of the issue is kind of uh, compiling everybody's ideas and talents and funneling them into one project. I think that's a really hard task that we're still trying to figure out. Uh, our first semester we had a lot of big ideas and instead we made subcommittees in that there is too much. We kind of extended ourselves too far and uh, this, this semester we kind of focused and we had better results but I think that's definitely something we could still improve on. So I believe that one of the biggest improvements we could make is uh, ensuring it's uh, like ensuring that we have greater participation by creating a project where everyone uh, knows what they can contribute to it. Because like sometimes in a big project, someone like a lot of the people in the club don't have that much experience programming, so they might see a big project and get intimidated by not necessarily knowing what they would do with it. So uh, if we so if we organize it in a way that so if we organize it into segments and make sure that everyone can contribute, I think we could have greater participation. Another thing would be uh, ensuring would be uh, increasing our recruitment possibilities because we don't like like I said we have a lot of members on paper, not many necessarily show up, and we I don't think we we're getting many new members either. So if we have a greater presence, more advertising, I guess if you want to call it that, then we could be able to get more people who could potentially contribute to our project and have a greater learning experience for everyone. Um, I think I really agree with the campus presence thing. I think having a few more events would be really good for the club just to get more members. Um, other than that, something I really wanted to do this semester, but there really wasn't time, is uh, practice interviews. I'm really big on those. They, they, they're pretty difficult, um, and I think just getting more experience with them would make a lot of, pe a lot of people more comfortable. So uh, thank you guys a lot, and my last question is what you would like to see on this channel in the future? Uh, I would actually like to see some more some more uh, artificial intelligence examples, kind of using the different APIs that exist out there currently and kind of uh, see how those work, because that's really the area I want to go into. I want to move into uh, artificial intelligence research, uh, and I'm, think, I'm thinking about going for my doctorate to do that, so. The first thing that comes to mind is, is GUI, uh, but that's already available, so you should check those videos out. Um, secondly, probably just 
a wide variety of different languages. I think um, just focusing on one language is kind of hindering yourself. I think it's really good to become really comfortable with one language so you conceptually understand how programming works, but I think spreading out and learning many different languages is really valuable. Thank you so much for being here with us today and appreciate your time and hopefully we'll see you in coming videos. Thank you. Thank you.